When we connect a resistor uh, to a voltmeter or an oscilloscope, uh, we find that uh, without applying uh, any voltage or any current on the resistor, due to random fluctuations of the electrons inside the resistor, there will be fluctuations of the voltage around zero. So a good way to measure this is to uh, connect it to an amplifier and basically by looking at the, uh, the reading in the voltmeter we can see that there will be fluctuations around zero and uh, the, the fluctuations, the signal due to fluctuations can be small but because the amplifier is amplifying it, it becomes easily detectable and uh, this is basically due to the random fluctuations of the mobile electrons inside the resistor. All right, so uh, we have a random voltage fluctuations uh, across a resistor. And this is due to due to fluctuations in the number of electrons. Electrons are moving from one side to the other side. So this is completely analogous to having your a box with a partition where you have gas molecules moving around from the left side to the right side and vice versa. So you have some fluctuations. There, uh, an imbalance between the number of electrons on one side and the other side is formed instantaneously and you see some voltage developing um, as soon as this imbalance is observed. So this is going to create an imbalance in the charge between the two electro uh, electrodes and this will end up giving you a voltage difference between the two electrodes. Um, so what is the uh, manifestation of this fluctuation? Well basically if the signal you're trying to measure is here, all right, so you can see that the signal will be hidden behind this fluctuation. So it will be very difficult to uh, detect the signal given that you have these fluctuations. So they set these fluctuations set a minimum detectable signal limit. So let's say that uh, I measure the amplitude of these fluctuations uh, roughly. So I can measure the amplitude of these fluctuations and I find that uh, this is of the order of uh, millivolts, let's say then what will happen, it will be difficult to measure a signal of the order of microvolts, let's say. So delta V fluctuation amplitude is of the order of millivolts, then a, a microvolt uh, signal is difficult to measure. And in that case, because this is affecting the, uh, the signal level we can measure, uh, we refer to these fluctuations as noise. So they give us a minimum detectable uh, signal level. 
And actually, uh, one thing that is quite useful is that since the fluctuations are quite random, uh, if you take a time average of these fluctuations, what would be uh, the answer? A long-term time average would give you uh, zero. So we do a long-term time average. Uh, so, for example, if we're trying to measure a DC signal of the order of microvolts, by doing this long-term time averaging, we get rid of the noise and basically we can detect uh, the microvolt DC signal uh, as long as uh, the, the noise or the random fluctuations of the electrons uh, causing the voltage fluctuations can be uh, averaged out to zero in the long term.